Algebra 2 CRAM, New York State Algebra 2 Regions. But no worries, this is a common core CRAM session. That means it can be used for any Algebra 2 course throughout the United States. But it's not limited to this country. It can be used for any Algebra 2 course throughout the entire world. So shout out to Florida, California, um, the Carolinas, Texas, and Canada and the UK, even Jamaica. Thanks for all your support. Functions. Question seven. Composition of functions on a graphing calculator. The odds of someone doing exactly what you tell them to do is slim, but I guarantee that if you cram with me, you'll become an Algebra 2 master. If I could stick every single Algebra 2 student with a syringe containing a healthy dose of eye-opening awareness of their inner mathematical genius, I definitely would. So get your healthy dose by inboxing me at memedicine at gmail.com. You have lots of friends, classmates, peers, or maybe even colleagues who are taking Algebra 2 with you as well. Tell them to inbox me at memedicine at gmail.com so that they too can order and purchase the complete cram session. Good luck studying. Question six, evaluate the composition of functions. If f of x is equivalent to x squared minus three x and g of x is equivalent to two x minus four, Evaluate f of g of 5. Definitely press pause if you need to, and I'll give you a moment to think. To evaluate a function or functions, as is in the case here, um, means to substitute a given value for x. All right, the notation f of g of 5 um, basically is going to mean the same thing as this notation, f of g of 5, okay? These two notation formats for a composition of functions are both read from left to right, but they're evaluated from right to left. The evaluation process is opposite of how standard English is read, okay? And just in case you're wondering, like, what the heck is a composition of functions exactly? A composition of functions uses the output of one function as the input of another function, okay? So both of these composition notations basically mean that we're going to take a five and substitute it in for x here in the function g of x. And then we're going to take the result of g of five and plug it into the function f of x for x and get a result. All right, so the first thing that we're obviously going to do is evaluate g of five. So g of five is equivalent to 2 times 5 because we substituted 5 for x minus 4. And um, so 2 times 5 is 10 minus 4. That's going to be equivalent to 6. So g of 5 is equivalent to 6. Now what we're going to do is evaluate f of 6 um, because it's kind of redundant to write f of g of 5 when we already know that f um, of 6 well, g of 5 is 6, so we can just substitute that in for this x placeholder, okay? So what we end up with is f of 6, or f of g of 5, but we're not being redundant, is equivalent to 6 squared minus 3 times 6. 6 squared is 36 minus 3 times 6 is 18, so we end up with 18 as our answer also f of g of 5 is equivalent to 18. Expediting um, the evaluation of this composition of functions could also have been done with your graphing calculator, all right? So what we're going to do is basically enter f of x and g of x into our y equals equation editors on our graphing calculators. And then what we're going to do is input the composition of these functions 
in the third slot for our y equals equation editor, okay? So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. So first, we basically enter x squared minus 3x, and we're going to let y1 equal f of x. Now we enter 2x minus 4, so basically we're letting y2 equal g of x, all right? And now what we're going to have to do um, in Y3 is write the composition of F of G. Not of 5, not just yet, but rather of X. And you'll see why in a moment that we don't need to input 5, okay? Or actually, we could do that, but just not right now. <laughs> oh, we're taking a different approach. Okay, so... What we're going to do is um, write out y1 here. That's going to represent the f in this um, formatting for the composition. And actually, we're using this format. So we're going to allow y1 to take the place of f, OK? And the way that you're going to bring up y1 is by hitting the variables key. Um, but you're going to use this sequence specifically. So we hit the variables key, and then this window pops up. All these different options, OMG. But what we're actually interested is, in is the Y variables. So we're going to hit our right navigation key, and we hit enter twice. I think I just zoomed over the previous key. Well, we hit enter once, and... Um, because we want to bring up the functions window. And when we hit the first enter, we're brought to the screen. Sorry for just zooming over it. And now, yes, what we want is Y1. So all we have to do is hit enter, or you can press the number one, and then you'll be brought back to your Y equals equation editor. So now that we have Y1, we have to go ahead and open up our set of parentheses by um, hitting the parentheses key. And after doing that, you're going to have to input y2 because we're temporarily allowing y2 to equal g of x. Okay? So you use the same similar sequence to input the y2 function. You're going to hit the variables button, then your right navigation key in order to select y variables. And then you hit enter once because a window is going to pop up with different types of variables, but we're only interested in the functions variables. So you hit enter because that's the first choice. And then you hit the down arrow, okay, because you want to select the second option, the Y2 variable, or you could have just pressed the number two, and then you could skip hitting enter. But if you don't press the number two, what you'll have to do is hit enter after hitting the down navigation key. And then your these are, this is the parentheses that we input previously. It wasn't shown, but now this is when you input Y2, okay? So now we see that we have to open up another set of parentheses. So we open that up. We're going to, remember I said use the X variable instead of five. And then we're going to close our capsule around the x variable. And then we're also going to close the set of parentheses around the y2 variable. OK, now there's a reason why I didn't input 5. I want you to see a table of results for the, this composition of functions. And to make the table less complicated, what we're going to do is go ahead and deselect the equal sign um, associated with y1 and y2 so that only the values for the composition or y3 will show up okay all right and we are going to deselect uh the equal sign by pressing the right navigation key and or the up navigation arrows until our cursor is hovering over the equal sign and when you get there just press enter once and it will deselect uh but you have to be over the um, equal sign. So when you deselect Y1, that's what it looks like. Then in this case, you would shift your cursor to the right and hit enter once. And after doing that, 
deselecting Y2 will look like this. And then to bring up your table function, you can hit second graph, and that's where the table is. Now you see the independent variable X and Y3. And we have all the values for our composition of functions. And notice that when we allow our cursor to hover over X is equivalent to five, because that's what we have in our scenario. We're evaluating the composition specifically at five. We get an answer of 18. And what do you know that's correct? Well, at, at least that's what we got <laughs> when we did it previously on our own without using the calculator, okay? All right.